One of the hardest questions to answer in life is, what makes people happy? I'm sorry, folks. It's not money. It's not your job. It's not becoming famous. Actually, the answer is simpler than you think. Buckle up, my friends. This video can change your life. If you do not remember, or you haven't seen it, at the beginning of this video, I told you I had in front of me one of the hardest decisions of my life. I wasn't exaggerating. That decision haunted me for some time. The biggest challenge for me living in Italy has not been learning the language <laughs> or getting used to new customs and a different culture. Definitely not the food. The biggest problem has been being away from my friends. In all these years abroad, I constantly ask myself, Changs, are you happy? Even when my friends asked the same question, the answer was always yes. The truth is that in the first years, I wasn't. But if you ask me now, I can confidently tell you, yes, of course I am happy. So what changed? The key difference was when I finally managed to build many different relationships here in Italy. It took me more than three years to accomplish that. I'm going to explain you the critical mistakes I made so you don't have to suffer as much as I did. First, I would suggest you identify what types of relationships or friendships you currently have. Born in 384 BC, teacher of Alexander the Great, for some, the father of logic, the Greek philosopher Aristotle identified three types of friendship. Number one, friendship of utility. This is when both parties gain something in return. It's not necessarily permanent. A good example of this could be a business relationship. Number two, friendship for pleasure. Young people are more likely to have it. There are stronger feelings at play. There is enormous happiness brought about by shared interests. But when tastes or preference change, it typically comes to an end. Number three, friendship of virtue. The qualities that the other person values are appreciated by both parties. This relationship needs to grow organically over time and depends on both parties. It is always enjoyable and beneficial. Generally, it lasts forever. All three are good for you, but having friends of virtue is what we all should strive for. You may be asking right now, yeah, Changs, I get it, but how the heck do I do that? I'm glad you asked. For the creation of any good social relationship, imagine you need to build a pyramid. What is the first thing you need to do for the construction of a pyramid? You start from the base. The basis of any good social relationship is positivity. Of course, you can still vent and cry on each other's shoulders, but for a relationship to be healthy, the positive interactions need to outweigh the negative ones by a factor of five. This means that for every moment of crying, venting about something that is happening in your life, there should be another five moments in which the encounter is free of this negativity. Just think about it. Let's say you are dating someone new. And on the first three or four dates, the only thing the other person does is rant or complain about something. Now, let's imagine you're dating a second person in the same period. This time, in the first three or four dates, you are constantly laughing. Which person would you like to continue dating? One of the sides of the pyramid is consistency. We can see this as the history we built, the time we spent together, the rituals, the patterns. This is very important because with the increase in interactions, we have the opportunity to get to know each other. When we observe consistent behavior, we can start to build trust. In a good social relationship, we need to feel safe. Being able to anticipate how the other person will react to particular behaviors is necessary for us to feel safe. Because of the consistency of school, this quality helped us form friendships when we were young. Because consistency is automatic, we are able to build our relationships at work, at university, with our sports teams, and with the associations we belong to. The other side of the pyramid is vulnerability. 
here is when we reveal and share, when we open up and allow more of who we are to be seen. However, being vulnerable involves more than just being open about your insecurities and shame. It also involves talking about your successes, your shared history, and your dreams. If by any chance you know so many people, but you still feel lonely, it means you haven't practiced enough these three things. This is exactly what happened to me in the first four years here in Italy. I didn't allow myself to have a consistency to build a strong rapport. So I couldn't have these moments of vulnerability with the people around me. As a result, I didn't create any meaningful relationships. Before coming to Italy in 2015, I considered myself very fortunate because over time I was able to build many friendships of virtue. The problem is that the vast majority of them are still in Mexico. Having consistency while living in another continent with a different time zone, it's a pain in the ass. So there wasn't a solid pyramid for me. This is exactly why I wasn't truly happy at the beginning of my adventure here in Europe. But why are good relationships so important to being happy? More than 80 years ago, Harvard University studied one of the longest and most fascinating studies in human history. The researchers were interested in finding out which psychosocial variables and biological processes from earlier in life predict health and well-being in late life. The Harvard study of adult development may be the longest study of adult life that's ever been done. For 84 years, they've tracked the lives of 724 men year after year, asking about their work, their home lives, and their health. Studies like these are extremely rare. Almost all projects of this kind fall apart within the first 10 years, but this study has survived. They are now beginning to study the more than 2,000 children of these men. There will be a link to the study in the description so you can check it out. So, after tens of thousands of pages generated in the study, what did they find? After all those years, the message from the study was clear. Good relationships keeps us happier and healthier. That's it. There were three important lessons though. Lesson number one, we benefit greatly from our social connections. Oh, and loneliness can be deadly. According to the study, people who have stronger social ties with their family, friends, and community tend to be happier. They have better physical health and live longer than those who have fewer connections. And loneliness turns out to be toxic. People who are less happy tend to be more socially isolated than they would like to be. In comparison to those who are not lonely, their health deteriorates in midlife, their cognitive abilities deteriorate earlier, and they have shorter lives. Lesson number two, the quality of your close relationships matters more than the quantity of your friends or the status of your romantic relationship. It turns out that being surrounded by conflict is extremely harmful to our health. For instance, marriages with a lot of conflict and little affection ended up being very bad for our health possibly worse than divorcing. When the researchers had followed their men all the way into their 80s, they wanted to take a look back at midlife to see if they could predict who would become a happy and healthy octogenarian and who wasn't. So they gathered everything they knew about them at age 50. It wasn't their middle-aged cholesterol levels that predicted how they were going to grow old. It was how satisfied they were in their relationships and lesson number three, good relationships don't just protect our bodies, they protect our brains too. All that being said, there I was, at the beginning of 2020, six months after my divorce. Still emotional and stable, I read the news about a new virus in China. Four days later, Italy started its national lockdown. A lot of people that I love and care about were on the other side of the Atlantic. I couldn't do anything about it. Fear, uncertainty, frustration, anxiety, the chemical cocktail I had in my brain basically every day. National lockdowns started all around the world, including Mexico. And there it was, the golden opportunity brought by the global crisis. As we were all at home, I saw my Mexican friends more during that period than in the past five years combined. 
As the Harvard study says, the quality of your close relationships matters more than the quantity of your friends. Don't get me wrong, by the beginning of 2020, I already have some meaningful relationships here in Italy, but the majority of my high quality friends were on other continents, particularly in Mexico. Those tough years gave me the opportunity to rebuild the foundations of the pyramids built in the past. Having this consistency with my friends of virtue allowed me to share everything that was happening in my life, not just the difficulties of the lockdown, but also everything related to my divorce and the constant challenges of living abroad. The opportunity to reconnect with basically all my friends of virtue arrived when I most needed it. I experienced firsthand how important these good social relationships are for my life. Now that I'm aware of this, I need to keep investing in these relationships. Even though I'm far from them, I can still show my friends that I care, I can be empathic, I can be honest, reliable, trustworthy, loyal, and a good listener. It will never be as good as being with them side by side. But what we experienced during those tough times was an important reminder that despite the distance, we can still be happy enjoy each other and continue to grow together. I hope you all understand now how important it is to build good social relationships in order to be happy. If you're living abroad or you simply have struggled with your social relationships in general, send me a direct message on social media or write me an email. I'll be happy to listen to your story and learn even more about how to keep building these pyramids of happiness. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao.